here we have a problem that we can solve with the law of cosines. Um, somebody's on a vacation on an island and he rents a boat and plans to go to island C, which is eight miles away. The question is, what's the angle should he navigate at? So we've got a triangle here. We've got all the sides of the triangle and we've got an angle that we need to find. This is a problem that we can solve with the law of cosines. I'm going to show you how you would set this up and then I'm going to show you a way to use an online calculator because with the law of cosines, especially when the numbers get big, there's a lot of room for error in calculation. So you may want to use a calculator at least to check your work on these problems. So first of all, we've got island A, B, and C labeled A, B, and C. So we might as well say that um, then this is angle A, angle B, and angle C. So we'll call this side A because that's opposite of angle A, and this is side B, and this is side C. So we've got this labeled, and now we want to solve for angle A. So we're going to have this at the end to solve for. We're going to, we're going to plug in numbers for everything else in this first uh, iteration of the law of cosines. So we take side A, which is 9, and square it. And we set that equal to side B, which is 8, and square it. And side C, which is 11, and square it. And then we subtract 2 times B, uh, times C, and that all gets multiplied by the cosine of A. So when you pull out your calculator, what you're going to be doing is you're going to subtract 64 and 121 from 81. Then you're going to divide by this number here, 2, negative 2 times 88. You'll get a decimal, and then you'll take the inverse cosine. Assuming you punch all that in right and it doesn't get confused along the way, you don't drop a sign or anything like that, you should get uh, the correct answer, which I think is, is going to be 53.8 or so. But let's see if we can use an online tool to, to do the same thing. Let me show you. Um, so here is a law of cosines calculator that just comes up when you type in law of cosines into Google. And um, when it first comes up, it's ready to solve for a side. And you can see the, the uh, uh, diagram of the, the triangle here and then spots to enter the values. This is set to solve for side A. We can set it um, to solve for different sides or for an angle. We need an angle in our problem. We need that angle theta. They're calling the angle gamma here. It, that's okay. It's not a big deal. But the sides aren't labeled the same way as in our diagram. So we need to be careful about that. We're looking for this angle here. And they're calling this side A, this side B, and this side C. So let's go back to our diagram and relabel. So this was A, and this was B, and this was C, I'm pretty sure. So A is 8, B is 11, and C is 9. So A is 8, B is 11, and C is 9. And there we go. We got our 53.8, rounding to, to a tenth um, uh, solution for gamma. So I would recommend this if your teacher allows it as a, a way to avoid um, some of the headaches and some of the, the easy calculation errors you can get um, with uh, complex calculations for, for the law of cosines. And that is how to use the law of cosines.